Betty. Oh. You're right, Teddy. The ace didn't help me. I flopped the nut straight. Talking about that, so take it down, Danny. Yeah, no more. No, not tonight. This son of bitch all night. He chick, chick, chick. He tripped me. Well, you feeling satisfied now, Teddy? Because I can go on busting you up all night. Yet, yet. He beat me. Straight up, pay him. Pay that man his money. Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy 40 Podcast. I am John Debari with my co-host, Mr. Matt Walker. And for our second go-around with uh, preview in the 2021 season, we talked about rookies last week, and we're going to obviously do a lot more of that. But this is our free agency podcast. Preview, primer, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to take a look at the guys that um, may be moving to a new team or may be getting franchised, staying with their current team, or re-signing with their current team and kind of how that will impact the fantasy landscape going ahead. This was Walk's idea and a good one, so I'll kind of let him run it from here. But Walk, how you doing and what do you think of this free agency class? Yeah, well, first and foremost, did you know this week it was, was is normally NFL Combine Week? But that's it would be taking place right now. I knew it was close. I didn't know it was this specific week. Which yeah. now you've just surprised me with terrible yeah. news and yeah, I, was, I listened uh, to Jeremiah and Bucky Brooks on Move the Chains like yesterday, an episode, and they dropped that, and I was like, oh man, that sucks. You know, just kind of reminding us that we're not getting that this year. Um, and I think this week is also when the franchise tags start started flying. yesterday. Started yesterday, you know, so it's very one and the same. I guess they're both they both tip at the same time, but I haven't seen anyone get tagged yet. And there's a, an assumption that there'll be a lot fewer tags this year because of the salary cap that's been imposed. That teams aren't going to want to be dropping a ton of cash on a single player for one year where they can't spread it out. And you know. We we both agreed we're going to be talking rookies pretty much from next week through the NFL draft. So why don't we jump on to these free agents as the free agency period is wide open. You know, we're discussing franchise tags and the like. And you know, the guy at the top of the list, we're just jumping into quarterbacks, is Dak Prescott. And I saw his number was like north of $37 million if they tag him again. And I've also seen reports that the Cowboys don't quote uh, intend to use the tag on them this year because they want to reach a long-term deal. But clearly if it comes down to the 23rd hour, they're going to slap the tag on them hoping to get a long-term deal in place. But if not, that 37 million just cripples a team from making any other moves to improve because what we're at 180 some million as far as the cap is concerned right now. I mean, that's like, what's that like 20%? Of the entire cap on a single player, that's that's Isn't troubling. Isn't he reported to want forty? I I think he wanted that a year ago when he got tagged. So I I doubt that number's gone down at all. You know, but at the end of the day, he could almost take the the Kirk Cousins path where force the Cowboys hand, make him tag him again, get the guaranteed thirty seven mil one year hope that ankle holds up for the year and then he goes and, and cashes out elsewhere. Like I, I think he's holding all the cards at this point. I mean, that injury makes this almost impossible because if you're the Cowboys, you want to, you want to give us dude 40 million a year for four or five years where these quarterback contracts now are like pretty much all guaranteed. No, but I, if not, Dak knows the fallback is he's getting 37 mil guaranteed for this year. I mean, I would still be holding strong on I want 40 mil a year if I'm Dak and, you know, call their bluff. I, I'm just sitting here thinking what I would do with $37 million for my one year of service. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's not. What, in, what did you do, John? 
That's really the question. What wouldn't you do for thirty-seven million dollars for one year of service? Nothing. Exactly. Absolutely nothing. You couldn't name it. No, I wouldn't. Probably, I, I wouldn't hurt children. That's about it. It's a, that's, that's a good line to draw. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's it's about a, it. It's a good thing to put out there you know, into, into the universe. But yeah, I, did Dax going to be a cowboy by hook or by crook? But I'm very interested to see how this pans out for for him and the Cowboys. Now, going beyond Dak, I think there's really only a few names of consequence. Um, you know, Philip Rivers is retired and Carson Wentz was traded to the Colts. So, so the Colts are buttoned up and Rivers, who would have been a free agent, is off the books. Mitchell Trubisky, the Bears did not pick up his fifth-year option. So he is a free agent. But what are the, what are the Bears' options right now? Go back to Nick Foles again and – or is it let Mitch go tr- test the market, realize no one is paying him, and then they sign him to a super cheap come back and fight for your job again with Nick Foley? I, I, I mean, as, as much as he sucks, especially for fantasy purposes, a, a couple of years ago, you know, he, he got you some points with his legs. He's got a winning record. He's gotten them to the playoffs. He's not, he's a significantly better real life quarterback than for fantasy. And I realize he's, at the end of the day, sucks at both. But you you hit the nail on the head. What other options are there for him? And what other options are there for the Bears? Unless the Bears, you know, are one of these teams that end up getting in this, you know, reported sweepstakes for, for Sam Darnold or, you know, Dark Horse to maybe get uh, – um, geez, the so Houston guy. Me. Thank you. Um <laughs> they they have no choice. I mean, the the good thing is he's cheap, and and we'll get to wide receivers in a little bit. They're rumored to be tagging Allen Robinson, so that they, they're going to need to save money in other places. And if you could get Trubisky, you know, what th- there's no market for him, so why not give him? Let's get crazy. Let's say sixteen million dollars a year for a quarterback. Give him a two year deal for thirty two. None of it guaranteed. <laughs> for 16 a year that's pretty cheap for quarterbacks and, and worst case scenario he doesn't develop you already know he sucks and you know you have to move on but i i think he does end up back with the bears yeah i i think that's the most likeliest of scenarios and listen we're talking about a player not having a market let's let's remember and this is a guy we're going to discuss in a, in a few minutes cam newton played for one million dollars Last year, when he signed with the Patriots, this dude is a, was a league MVP. Took a team to a Super Bowl, and he agreed to play for one million dollars last year. Jameis Winston went to the to the Saints and agreed what was it to play for one point one million dollars. I mean, I I think you're my numbers grossly, are disgustingly yes you're, you're right grossly overrating what Trubisky he it might be two years sixteen million dollars. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say Trubisky. that's probably closer. Um, it, it, you know, maybe escalators, maybe a Marcus Mariota type deal yeah. where it was, you can make a ton of money if you end up being the starter and you play well and we go to the playoffs and blah, 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 and this and that. I mean, that might be the Bears, you know, break glass in case of emergency because Pace, it was reported that they never officially offered the Eagles. They were talking, but they never officially offered the Eagles. So they have a plan. And I don't know that it can be hope that a quarterback is there at what 20 that is going to start for you right away. Because one pace and Nega will be fired in a year. If they don't go to the playoffs again this year. Yeah. So I mean, they don't that's, that luxury. That's part of it too. I think is they have to, you know, they made that fucking trade. They, <laughs> <laughs> they traded up to get this fucking bum with the other amazing guys still on the board. You you just have to at this point, I think, go down with the ship, right? You got to put the money towards this guy. This is going to be your quarterback, and you either develop him and save your job, or he sucks and you are out of town anyway. You you really have. I think they have to do it. Yeah, I, I'm with you. It's going to be interesting to see. What the Bears do when the day is done, but ultimately, I agree. I think Mitch's most likely landing spot is a return to the Bears. Now, Ryan Fitzpatrick's a free agent with the Dolphins. 
who knows where he goes, but please go somewhere where there's an opportunity because we all need a little Fitz magic yeah. in our life, even if it's just in short spurts. Uh, Andy Dalton acquitted himself pretty well as the backup with the Cowboys, but I still don't think that earns him a starting opportunity anywhere else. It'll earn him another backup gig. We talked about Jameis Winston. He signed a one-year deal with the Saints that there was a lot of assuming that uh, what's his name? Taysom Hill got the starting game because they wanted to hide Jameis Winston. They because their cap situation is just dreadful. But oh yeah, Drew Brees still has not retired officially. Is not retired. They've and they reportedly spoke with him like a week ago. There's a lot of uncertainty with the Saints, but I again think the most likely destination for Jameis is returning to New Orleans because I do believe that Drew Brees ultimately retires at the end of the day. And James will be the starter, not Taysom Hill for the Saints. Do you agree with that? I agree completely. All right. And then last and potentially least in this carousel <laughs> was the aforementioned Cam Newton, who had a dreadful season with the Patriots on last week's episode. You thoroughly trashed the Patriots organization and their lack of skill position players. <laughs> which certainly did not help the case. Cam Newton himself said getting COVID uh, really messed him up for the remainder of the season. And I don't know that that's entirely inaccurate. That was just such a Pop Warner-ish type program that was being run by the Patriots last year where it was all we want to do is run all day you know, and then throw underneath just old school – run and play defense football where they just weren't good enough on, on either side. A lot of opt-outs on the defense, but it was destined to fail for Cam. He's not going to be back with the Patriots. Is Cam Newton a starting NFL quarterback in 2021? I mean, are you asking me talent-wise or are you no, saying no. it would be an opportunity? It, will he be a starter? And I'm not saying someone gets hurt. Like, is he going to go somewhere and have the opportunity to compete to be the starter of breaking camp? I think so because there's a couple decent places for him to land. Uh, like, I, I don't think it's completely out of the realm of possibility. He could go to Washington, reunite with uh, Ron Rivera. That They have need at the position. Um, going back to the Bears, if Trubisky does want a ridiculous amount of money and Cam can come in and play for <laughs> you know, two million a year, he's doubling his paycheck from last year. He's an upgrade over Trubisky. So there's a few spots. So it, would I say yes, like a 51 to 49%? Yes. Then I would say yes. He's not without opportunities. And I think you named the two. I think it is either he gets an opportunity with Washington because of his ties to Rivera or it's the bears. I, I don't see anywhere else that he could go to be the starter because other areas like Jacksonville is taking Trevor Lawrence. The jets are taking a quarterback or two as much as they want to act like they're not, they're taking their quarterback of the future or two. So you're not bringing a Cam Newton to either of those two places. It, it's going to be those fringy playoff teams who are 19 and 20 picking that aren't going to be able to fix their leaky quarterback positions, but are kind of still competitive that a Cam Newton certainly could help. And speaking of Cam Newton, do you see that video of that little a-hole at his camp? Yeah. Telling him I, he's poor. Or- I didn't see what had happened. I didn't see. I saw the, the, the second part where Cam Newton was talking to him, but I missed what the kid initially did. It, 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 I, I caught like I probably compressed portion of it as well, and it was really just the back and forth. Is, and I'll give it to Cam for, for maintaining his composure and keep asking just to where's the kid's dad at? Like, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to the guy who raised you <laughs> at the end of the day. I got to get to the root of the problem here. So kudos to him. I mean, this kid afterwards came out and, and apologized and said he got caught in the moment. And that's, what, doesn't, what, a, what a statement, by the way. Yeah, truly not written, by, another, truly not written by that kid whatsoever. <laughs> His, his, his dad wrote that one as he was fucking beating his he's ass. got a pr guy obviously <laughs> fucking yeah. kid yeah i mean it was just way too buttoned up and you know, it was amazing that, yeah there, there was editing involved yeah, in that response but again kudos to cam for for staying above board there and i i hope he gets an opportunity because he still i think can be fantasy viable we saw the worst of what cam what's left of cam because he's not the player he used to be you know can be when there's zero talent around him and there was really, there wasn't an NFL top 36 anything type wide. You know what I'm saying? There, 
their wide receiver one isn't a wide receiver three on most other teams. Yeah, it's just yeah, you know, they didn't have a tight end. They okay had some some running backs that were shuffled through the entire year. But if that's the you know, that's the best part of your offense or your pass catching running backs and Cam is still a runner by heart, it's just destined to destined to fail. So <laughs> good Any luck. Any chance he goes back to the Patriots. I don't believe so. I mean, he had nothing but great things to say about Belichick, and Belichick didn't come out and slam no, him, you know, him at, too. At, at any point either. I just I don't think that's best for the Patriots. You know, I, they or need him. to make a decision. They need to either fully bottom out, or they need. I, I, I know that they had cap issues last year, or they just need to, you know, commit to a younger guy. You know, and and hope he develops. I, I think ultimately trading for Jimmy Garoppolo is a potential out for them because it sounds like the 49ers would like to move on as well. And the way Jimmy G's contract, he has no guaranteed money left. So although it's 50 mil in the books, he could be one year, see if he's really the, the deal and they could be done with him. So I could see that happening for the Patriots more so than Cam Newton going back because that's just going to have them not not being bad enough and not being good enough. All right, let's okay. get out of here. This is far too many quarterbacks. <clears throat> we definitely spent far too much time <laughs> on the quarterback position for what <laughs> would be like one or two relevant moves. Obviously, Dak is one, but I mean, really, who else? Maybe we get Jameis Winston back in our lives. You know, that would be yeah, that would be a beautiful thing for fantasy. But we're going to move on to wide receivers, and this is an amazing class of free agent mm-hmm. receivers and we'll start right at the top and you mentioned the bears and tagging Allen robinson i i've seen a lot of tag and trade because Allen robinson included does not ever want to play for the chicago bears again like he is he was pounding the table for an extension like a year ago and got him nowhere you know so i think he just ran out the string i'm I'm going to say that Allen Robinson is tired of shitty quarterbacks and is going to end up somewhere where there's at least consistent above average quarterback play. He's made a decent chunk of money. He is going to get paid again wherever he goes. I think this is a he's going to try and change his destiny pivot point in his career that even if there's a tag to the Bears, I do not think Allen Robinson ever plays for the Chicago Bears again. I think if it is a tag, it's a tag and trade because – they, there's a ton of value in Allen Robinson. So do you agree with that? And if so, where could you pot- potentially see Allen Robinson landing? Never never underestimate the Bears' ability and desire to ruin someone's career. Um, No, I think they tag him, and I think they intend to keep him. That is uh, – <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't think they care how miserable he is. I think uh, they would be happy to have a miserable Allen Robinson there unless he wants to sit out a year like – um. Lev Bell did. So I I think he's with the Bears. I think I statistically, I think the odds of him going anyplace else, tag and trade, or just not getting tagged, I think are so low that I I, I haven't even entertained the thought of him landing someplace else. Yeah. God, you bears to me. I guess I think that's truly possible that they could just keep their thumb on Allen Robinson, you know, whether Mm -hmm. it's just for one more year on a tag or. You know, maybe they wear him down and get him to sign a, a long-term deal with them. I just, I, well, I guess, go, I just don't go, want him there. Because no. we already talked about going back to quarterback. going back to quarterback. You know, we both suspect they want to bring Trubisky back on a low deal, and if they want him to take the next step to save their fucking jobs, they need weapons there for him. You know, we like Darnell Mooney, but that guy's not a number one. So if if Robinson leaves, that's what they got. And if they're bringing Trubisky back, they absolutely need Robinson there to be his top option in the passing game. Because despite some of these other names we'll go through, the the, the odds of them bringing a couple or one of these guys in to kind of be their alpha with Mooney being kind of the the, the two. The, the, no no one on this list is going to bring the upside Robinson does to try to make Trubisky a viable NFL quarterback. So I I think if they bring him in for less money and tag Robinson, I I think they'd be happy with that situation, at least for another year. There are a few things in this world that make me happier, especially as like-minded as you and I are. When I hear a statement to say as high as we are on Darnell Mooney, that is just a (laughs) truly 
beautiful thing. Magic. We are we are fully there on Mr. Mooney. But I was just kind of looking at team cap space. It's like, where could he go? You know, like what team is willing to you – know, if they do tag him, I mean, you're committed to that, and then you know he wants a long-term deal. Jacksonville, the Jets, and then the New England Patriots are one, two, three in cap space. We were just talking about the Patriots needing to fix their wide receiver room and having the space to do it. I'm not going to say it's going to happen, but that would make a ton of sense for New England. I don't know even what the Bears would expect in return. This has been a crazy market, but that sure would help their wide receiver room a bit. So, after the Bears, we're going to move on to a personal favorite mm. of ours. Someone that broke our hearts last year. Um, Boy, did he. Week after week after week. And that was Kenny Galladay. Another one that sounds like a tag and trade candidate, much like Allen Robinson. I think there is zero chance that Kenny Galladay plays for the Lions this year. It doesn't make sense. I mean, new coaching staff, they're, they're new quarterback. They're obviously in a rebuild. It, it it just doesn't make sense to bring him back. Yes, and they are currently over the cap right now. So you yeah. tag him and give him, what, $14 million or something in that ballpark uh, on a one-year deal, and you know he's not going to want anything less than that on a multi-year deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think tag and trade all day while we are on the Lions. Marvin Jones is also a free agent who continues to just hang around and be fantasy relevant in spurts. He has said that he wants to go to win a Super Bowl. So he he ain't going back to the Lions either. There's a lot of he is going to play with Matthew Stafford and the Rams and soak up Van Jefferson's wide receiver three targets. Uh. Bastard. Uh, I could see that happening very much so. Take a veteran minimum deal. He's made a, a nice chunk of money as a beta on just about every wide receiver core he's ever been on. So I could see Mr. Marvin Jones heading out west to the yeah. and, and he's very, very underrated, real life and for fantasy. He's a somebody, like you said, if, if he's talking about winning a championship, and you mentioned he already made, made plenty of money. He could end up on any of these, you know, playoff teams as, as a very viable, you know, potential wide receiver to fill in for a lot of teams. And, and anywhere he goes, I, I don't think it changes his value much. I mean, obviously in Detroit, he was the clear number two. And with Galladay out, was kind of thrust into that number one role. And then although he wasn't a wide receiver one for fantasy, he did. He, he was a pretty steady plug and play, especially if you knew he was going to get the targets without Galladay in the lineup. So he, I, I think if you have him, he's a hold. I think wherever he goes, you have a a, a locked in bye week fill in guy. And if you're you're short, you, putting him in your flex, you could do a lot worse. I I think he's pretty. He's not landing spot dependent at all. I think that guy kind of has a job. It's not a job, but a specific role. No matter what job he takes, I think it's very well said. And I I vaguely recall him beating the shit out of the Green Bay Packers year after year. He didn't do well against them this past year, but in years past, he was a thorn in their side. He he could definitely end up in Green Bay as a perfect compliment sure. to Devontae Adams because I just don't believe that Alan Lazard or MVS are really, I mean, wide receiver twos. I, I think their best serves is rotational threes. So if you want to go win a championship, you could stay in the division as well and go catch passes from Aaron Rodgers, but um, still not a – not a upper echelon player that I do truly believe is going to go try and win a Super Bowl. So it might not be he goes to the place where he's going to get the most targets and opportunities. So it might ding his fantasy value a little bit. We'll move back up the board because we do have a few more names of relevance to talk about here while on our wide receiver. And uh, Will Fuller, uh, previously of the Texans, again, I don't know that he ends up back there either. And especially if Deshaun Watson doesn't want to play for the Texans ever again. What's what motivation does Will Fuller have? And they they ain't tagging him, you know, after uh, finally doesn't get injured for a season but gets popped for PED. So Will Fuller still finds yeah, a way boy. not to play a full season in his NFL career. But he's another guy that I think is going to be gotten cheap by a team because I think he even has to serve one game to start next year. And now he kind of has that tarnish on him a little bit. But someone's yeah. going to take a chance on Will Fuller and they're going to get yeah. A hell of a football player. I, if I'm not mistaken, him and Watson are best pals. So 
I wouldn't be shocked if he just sits on the sideline and waits to see what happens with Watson. If he stays in Houston, Fuller might come back on a lesser deal just to play with his buddy. And like you said, he may have to take a lesser deal between injuries and the, the, the PED stuff from last year. So I, I, again, with him, different player totally from Marvin Jones, but I think you know exactly what you're getting with him. He's one of those big play guys where, yep, he's going to have a, a three touchdown, 230 yard game at some point in the year and in, in best ball, that's going to be awesome. And then several other weeks, he's not going to play at all. And a few other weeks, he's going to catch, you know, one for 37 and that's going to be it. So you, you know, what kind of player he is, you know what you're going to get the upsides there. I, I don't like him anywhere outside of best ball, but I don't, and I don't think, I think him too, he's not landing spot dependent at all either. He's, he is what he is, the type of player you're you're getting, the type of player you saw in Houston you're going to get with any other team. So, you know, you mentioned Green Bay just to put him there. It's going to be the same thing. I mean, he he's the number two. He's on a better team, so we might have some monster games uh, with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, but you're, you're not going to – he's never going to be a plug-and-play weekly wide receiver one. No, very well said. And I, I can't think at this point that – Deshaun Watson is just posturing here for something. He already got the deal from the Texans, and he's so he's not looking for a new deal. I mean, this isn't this isn't this isn't leverage. He truly does not want to be there. That's not going to change just because you change the coaching staff. I mean, they uh, they supposedly didn't even include him in the GM search like the owner said he would. I'm pretty sure they didn't include him in the head coach search like the owner said that they would. Like, like he's not getting the respect that. He's obviously asked for, and with that full no trade, he just has them by the balls. You know, you could say we're not trading him as much as you want. You're, you're trading him. You're losing leverage every day when Matt Stafford and Carson Wentz get dealt in not trading to Sean Watson. Houston just needs to literally blow it up. They have the perfect just goat coach that no one ever saw coming. That dude can, yeah, you know, try and write the shit for two or three years. He gets shit canned, blamed for everything, and then. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're in a better place, you know, financially. They finally have some draft picks because Bill O'Brien isn't trading everything away anymore. And better days are ahead. But, yeah, I don't see Deshaun Watson being back with the Texans. And oh, See, the- now I go opposite. I think he's back. I think they say, fuck <clears throat> it. You don't want to play? Go ahead. Burn a year sitting on the bench. You're still under contract. Yeah, and listen, I I think he would. I, yeah. I think he'd sit out, personally. So I think they play hardball. Ah, <sighs> well. Listen, they, they would be the organization, right? Just Precisely. tell the franchise quarterback, hey, fuck you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're not trading you. If yeah. you're miserable this year, imagine how miserable imagine you'll be playing for us next year after a year not playing. <laughs> imagine how that contract tolls. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Will Fuller, to be determined. Next is personal favorite of mine and one of the most curious cases of 2020, and it's Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju was wide receiver 16 had 128 targets on the season, and he had the lowest amount of receiving yards by any receiver within the top 33 wide receivers in PPR score. It was such a fucking crazy year for him that luckily he got nine touchdowns because that entire offense just changed because Big Ben is the pop gun quarterback at this point in time. So I I think Juju leaving Pittsburgh – will boost his dynasty value. I also think he'll fall back into kind of like the, the beta wide receiver two on a team and he can thrive there as a slot guy that doesn't command, you know, the defense is full attention. What about you? Yeah, I'm not as big a fan as you are. I mean, I, I, I still think he's a, a viable wide receiver. Um, I, I thought for sure he was out of Pittsburgh. That seemed to be the vibe you know, going into last year, knowing he was a free agent this year. And then this off season, although this morning and yesterday, I started seeing some rumblings that the Steelers are talking about bringing Juju back. It's kind of the Steelers thing though. You know what I mean? They, they've they drafted a lot of these guys, develop them. They, they've been fortunate that they've drafted enough players that were viable starters in the NFL, that they can let these guys go when the contracts come up. So if they move on from him, they're just fine with Claypool and Deontay Johnson and, and Washington. So they don't need to bring him back. I, I like the weapons they have. And I, I think 
from an NFL business point of view, it's the smart thing to do. And it's kind of been what they've done. They've always had these, you know, going back to Wallace and Antonio Brown. And I, I think there's other guys I'm missing. They, they've done this the whole time. And it's, it's kind of their, their thing. So I think, Daniel Sanders. Was, yeah, yeah they, they've done it repeatedly. Mm-hmm. So why is he going to be the guy that they're like, now nah, we're going to bend over backwards and, and sign him. I, so I think he's gone where he goes. I don't know, but much like you just said, I, I think his, as we saw in Pittsburgh, his best role would be to be a, a number two. And number two. Yep, good old number two, right in the toilet. Which is fine. He was productive. Yeah, I, I agreed. Uh, Pittsburgh currently 26, uh, $7 million over the cap. Now that's t- that's sounds egregious, but it's not when you look at number 32. And the Saints are currently $70 million <laughs> over the cap. So uh, some creative bookkeeping will fix that. But I, I think Big Ben's number is like ridiculous. And no, he's true. holding firm that he, he's not willing to play for less, but he said he'll like get creative with how they figure this out. Like mm-hmm. Big Ben might be getting extended. And that is like such have the team over a barrel type mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, mentality by Big Ben because he's just going to make that franchise pay for a few more years rather than just this one when he's clearly past his prime. But we'll, we'll discuss – Two bucks, and then we'll do a dealer's choice, and it's Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown are both free agents. I personally think Antonio Brown ends up back with Tampa Bay. He wants to run it back with Brady. Chris Godwin, I just saw that someone say they can see him being tagged by the Bucks as they're in this Tom Brady win-now window, but tagging him likely means that Shaq Barrett and Levante David are gone because there are other there are two other players cap you know tag candidates for the bucks so do you compromise two spots on defense for a chris godwin i personally hope especially if antonio brown resigns that chris godwin goes elsewhere i've heard rumblings that the colts are a potential landing spot as they could use some upgrades at receiver and now that carson wentz is there i would love to see chris godwin in indianapolis I don't know why I get these. I haven't seen it anywhere. I just get these feelings every couple of years. I think Godwin ends up in Detroit. Uh, that's who they pay up for. You get a young guy. Yeah. Yep. You know, rather than circling back on Galladay, it seems like he's burned his bridges. You know, it goffs there. He's competent enough. He's a short thrower. Godwin really thrives in the slot on the underneath stuff. I don't think that would be the the end of the world. You know, you're talking about ideal environment in a dome for most of your games. So there could be worse landing spots for Chris Godwin than uh, than with those Detroit Lions, especially as we said, Galladay and Jones are likely gone. So right now, their top receiver would be our boy Quintez Cephas. So uh, that's not how you want to go into a season. So no, that's, sir. Uh, they could spend they, some money. They, uh, so they have to do something. <laughs> yeah, Detroit currently 22nd with negative 1.3 and change. So they they could probably easily slash 20 to 30 mil just with some veteran cuts. So, all right. So we said dealer's choice. There's a few more names of significance here. Um, you know, run you, off. Know, you, you know t- where I'm going, but go you ahead. tell me one. Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, T.Y. Hilton, Larry Fitzgerald, A.J. Green, the latter three being those veteran names. So go ahead. Talk about Corey Davis. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they didn't pick up their fifth year option as a first year player and he f- had the fantastic fourth year breakout. So I think he's, I think he's made himself some money. I don't know. You have the cap stuff in front of you. What are, what are the Titans looking at? Uh, they have 1.6 mil. So, you know, all things being considered, they're 21st in the league, but they're in decent shape as I'm sure there's a lot of easy cuts for them to make. Yeah, I, I mean, ideally, I think as, as much as I don't like him in that offense, I think now that he finally kind of took that next step and Tan Hill seems a little more comfortable with him, I, I think that would be a good spot for him. But, you know, seeing him with the Colts wouldn't be the worst thing ever. And, and you know, looking up at this list, if Allen Robinson moved on from the Bears, he could go to the Bears. He is a Chicago guy. It wouldn't be a, a stretch. We, we mentioned the Lions possibly, you know, Godwin for, like I said, it's just for some reason, I feel like he's going to end up with the Lions for no reason at all. But if Davis went to the Lions as their number one, that's not the worst thing ever. Um, he's obviously not signing with the Steelers, but where where are these other vacancies popped up in free agency? If guys move on, I think Davis is a very viable Cheaper, 
you know, cheaper than the the guy that's leaving. I think he's going to sign for less than Robinson. He's going to sign for less than Galladay. I think he could squeeze into those teams and be a decent fantasy option. I have three landing spots, and I don't know that you're going to like them for for your boy. And it's looking at cap space and team need. And the first are the Jets. They have a buttload of money. He is a Damn plus right in the chest. <laughs> he, plus blocker. He got rave reviews uh, his entire career for how willing of a blocker yeah. and how great he is blocking. And, you know, a lot of these Derrick Henry runs were, you know, Corey Davis, you know, aided type runs. I think Sala is going to want to bring, you know, a hard nose run game to those Jets. I could easily see him stepping right in with Denzel Mims on the outside for those Jets. Previously mentioned New England Patriots. He just screams Patriot. Like they yeah. go after a guy after his first contract. They don't, doesn't get it picked up. They have a ton of cash. And then the last is a team that truly needs some help. The Baltimore Ravens. He is another guy that in their scheme, a plus run blocking wide receiver, a bigger body that they currently do not have. He would be perfect opposite Hollywood Brown for a contender. Unfortunately, he'd be catching passes from Lamar Jackson, which I don't think would lead to, you know, a fantasy breakout from your boy, Corey Davis. I I hate you. Those are all they, they make sense, sense, but yep, I don't like them. Sense. Yep, tons of sense. Um I'm not going to talk about any of these old guys because, no. you know, Larry Fitzgerald just needs to retire. I mean, just open up that Cardinals offense to younger players. I love him. I still see his value to the Cardinals, but come on. A.J. Green is 0% going back to the Bengals. I think he's going to go chase a championship as well. I don't know where that's going to be, but imagine A.J. Green in Green Bay. Would it be? Yeah. Take a vet minimum deal. Go with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, you know, and, you know, go win yourself a championship. I want to talk, I mean, and then T.Y. Hilton, who knows? I mean, I think his best landing side is still with the Colts, but and Jim Mercer absolutely loves him, but he's probably going to chase money. Um, this is his, his last, you know, bite at the apple. I want to go with Curtis Samuel. I love Curtis Samuel. I, I think he's like the new NFL, dude. Like, he's just so <laughs> versatile. They finally started using him when Matt Rule and Joe Brady got to the Carolina Panthers as more of that dual threat, Percy Harvin-ish offensive weapon, and I was giddy. Now he's a free agent. They already have DJ Moore, who they're going to have to pay real soon. They have Robbie Anderson, who Matt Rule loves. You know, known back from the Temple days. He isn't going anywhere. I don't think Curtis Samuel is going to be back with the Panthers. 31 other teams could benefit from having Curtis Samuel on their team. I don't know where he's going to end up, but I just hope and pray it's with an innovative offensive mind that will continue to maximize him. Cause I think Curtis Samuel still has untapped potential as a fantasy wide receiver. I'm, enough people say it. I'm, I'm just, I've, I've never been, never been there. Love it. All right. Let's go to the bell of the ball. The Ooh. running back position. I, I, I need to take a break. Yes. Let's just compose, let's compose ourselves because <clears throat> the top of the list is a player that is near and dear to our hearts. He is was, he our favorite player? 100%. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think we may have to uh, amend the 40 logo because this gentleman has been – we've been beating the drum – for Mr. College. Showtime Aaron Jones since he was doing the UTEP two-step. And no one knew who the fuck this guy was. And he was the <laughs> second running back drafted by the Packers in his own class when they took slug-ass Jamal Williams before him. But Aaron Jones is the top free agent running back that is said to be looking for – I don't think he's looking for I, I think it's – he could command upwards of $14 million per year on his next deal. Probably just looking at a slight decrease over some of these other kind of mega deals of the Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon's, Ezekiel Elliott's of the world who have signed in the last couple of years. I don't know that that's a reality no. in this new NFL. The franchise tag for the running for him, I read, would only, this is, I don't know that I could even finish that sentence. Would be eight million dollars. Yeah, life changing yeah. money for everyone else. I think there's a better than zero chance that he does get tagged by the Packers, who are 
in this extreme win now window if they can't strike a long term deal with him. Because $8 million isn't crippling when you have no money committed. You, you, you got AJ Dillon on a cheap deal. I'm sure you could bring Jamal Williams back for dirt if you want. So you finally give Aaron Jones the money he probably should have already been making to be, you know, an RB1 in this league and one of the true dual threat running backs in the NFL. But if Aaron Jones does not return to the Packers, where could you see him going? And is that better than Green Bay? The the place that someone else mentioned on Twitter, and I have just been locked in my brain ever since, would, would be San Francisco. I, I mean, that guy would be fucking incredible in a Shanahan offense. If I finally get to, you know, get a full workload and show off his complete skill set because he can do everything. Um, so that would be my dream spot. I mean, other spots that kind of – where he would fit in. I mean, I, I could see him on the Cardinals doing well. Um, but you're, that, get, you're I, getting there. You're getting there. You're close. But but even, you know, other teams that I think have some some vacancies or a need. I, again, I'm not looking at what, what kind of money they have available, but I could see him in the Dolphins doing well. There, ding, 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 ding. You got but, there, John. But yeah, my, I, I, I didn't know where, where you were talking. But, yeah, I, I, I got this the Niners thing popped in my head, and now I can't shake it. And I hate the Niners, so I, I would be happy to see him go elsewhere, but – yeah, I, I think he's going to do fine wherever he goes. I can't see him. I saw that $15 million number two floating around, and that's a 0% chance of happening. I think he'd be lucky to get 12, and that's not a accurate a assessment of his yeah his value to a team, but that's what they pay the position, so that's what you're going to get. He's hitting the market at the wrong time. That's unfortunate for him. You know, that he wasn't one of these guys that got extended before all of this. The Packers just used him and abused him. You know, for- and he's used lightly. He can go somewhere, and if they fucking want to stomp on him, they can. He hasn't been beat up, but he does kind of tickle that 300-touch threshold when you when you yeah, indicate carries and receptions, and he hasn't missed a couple games in the last year. So I think he gets more utilization than people know because he never gets that 20-carry workload. Yeah, But he's the 15-4, and four, you know, 15-3. and three typical player so he gets his touches but San Fran 16th almost a league medium in uh available cash Arizona 15th so has a little bit more to spend the Miami Dolphins are at 10th have almost 27 million dollars to spend you saw they tried to bring in Breda and Jordan Howard last year to stabilize that position both of those gentlemen flopped as I said that Jordan Howard would do I don't know what Breda's deal is but he got lapped by Miles Gaskin and then ultimately Salvan Ahmed as well. But I don't know that either of those guys are the answer. You bring a veteran like Aaron Jones into that offense. You draft one of these receivers and Mm -hmm. you move forward with Tua, Aaron Jones. You move Devontae Parker to the two and you have like a Jamar Chase as your alpha. Fuck, get Devontae Smith, Devonta Smith, if you want to bring him back with Tua. That offense gets light years better than it was last year because it was not very good last year. They they did not have a ton of talent in that offense. Aaron Jones could be the missing piece to that puzzle for the Miami Dolphins. I don't know if Devonta Smith wants to go there. I think it was him that they asked who was better no, I, to a or Mac. Yep. <laughs> he said Mac Jones. Damn right he did. He said without hesitation, I think was the was the quote with it. But hey kid's honest. Yeah. But I think too you kinda gotta, you know, two is already the league making money. You gotta talk up your buddy to help you saying Tua doesn't help Tua. You saying Mac Jones could have just yeah, exactly could have just put five million bucks in that guy's pocket. Yeah, there might have been a text message to Tua. Yeah, you know, on the side, like don't take this personal. Yeah, you know, we're yeah. we're trying we're trying to help a brother out. We're trying to we're trying to get Mac Jones, to, yeah. you know, out of nowhere Heisman finalist. Couple more couple more million. So, all right, off of Aaron Jones. Love Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is awesome. Cool. Aaron Jones show. Yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll take that off air. We but should. yeah, I mean, I, I can I can bash Mike McCarthy again. I can circle back and you know shit on Jamal Williams. Yeah, there's 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 never uh, I'm never out of information as far as uh, pro Aaron Jones content is concerned. After him, it's very much a mixed bag. I mean, Chris Carson, rightfully so, is the next. I didn't he, even know he was a free agent. Yeah, he 
was like a late quiet. round pick. So he hasn't made dick nope. as far as money is concerned in his career. I think he was a sixth or seventh round pick, if I'm not mistaken. So they've literally squeezed the life out of Chris Carson in Seattle. I'm just going to bring him up real quick to see what these career earnings look like for, for Mr. Carson, as we were just talking about. Well, what I'm, I'm going to jump down committed. the list here because okay. just finding out Carson was even on the list. Uh, it, it, we mentioned wide receiver, kind of some of these guys leaving, create a vacancy and other different free agent comes in and pops in. Two guys on this list who struck me as people who could just switch teams, Chris Carson and Fournette. Carson been around a little bit, came into the league late, probably doesn't want a ton of money. But as you're looking right now, I, I bet he didn't make a bunch. But he can go to Tampa, and, and Tampa can use money elsewhere, and he can pro- would probably play for less. He seems like a, a a team guy, and players like playing with him. I could see him go to Tampa and kind of fill that Fournette role if Fournette leaves. And they want to try to bring Ronald Jones along anyway. And if he kind of falters, Carson's a decent plug-in guy who's – proven to be a viable running back in the NFL. And then the, the old swap Fournette with the Seahawks is kind of what the Seahawks want in a running back. He, he's underrated as a pass catcher, even though he has some of the more egregious drops I've seen in the last few years, but he is kind of a, you know, downhill runner, ball control guy, big, strong guy, despite his, his wobbly ankles, which seemed to win away last year. But just looking at two guys who I could see sign with the, other ones team, I, Fournette and Carson, I could see as a decent swap. Yeah, I mean, way, way to fill the air as I did this, John, and I, I hope that does not happen personally. But um, $3.773 million career oh. earnings, and Fuck. 2.1 of that was last year because he hit escalators, I believe. He, 440, 555, 645 is what he made his first three years as the running back, and he finally jumped that 2.1 so less than 1 million per year to be beaten battered and bruised with those seattle seahawks one he ain't going back to seahawks on a team friendly deal two he ain't going anywhere on a team friendly deal he is going where there's the most zeros on the offer that's it he he, he has some money to get at the I end got of the money day. that he's a running back though yeah again and i, I keep <clears throat> pinging this team and i could see you're going to say Chris Carson Sam. on the New York Jets. Oh. <laughs> You're going to say it. That's so they, gross. They have so much money and they have a need. I mean, they, oh. they, they were wrong with the Le'Veon Bell. He really never wanted to play for the Jets. They just gave him a yeah. stupid contract. Yeah. Michael Cadden got fleeced. Um, he just took a year off and then said, who's going to give me the most money? Jets raised their hand. He went there. What is it? Uh, P. Ryan, LaMichael P. Ryan, Lamical. Michael, that's their, their top back right now. They were they were just running Frank Gore into the line all year long. There's literally nothing. The cupboard is bare with the Jets. And again, I'm just at Salah. Bring in a veteran do it all running back to stabilize your whoever they draft at number two. You know, they have a decent line. They they've made Mackay Beckton was a great pick for them last year. I don't think that'd be the worst place for Chris Carson to end up. No. Right? I think it's no. potentially the place that could offer him the most money. As far as your boy Fournette's concerned, he's made a decent amount. He was a first round pick. You know, yeah. he he now has his, you know, he's he's Lombardi Lenny uh, at the end of the day, as his 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 legend has grown uh with that playoff run where he looked special and better than Ronald Jones. Not difficult to do. Ronald Jones isn't good. <laughs> We've established that countless times here. I have no clue where Leonard Fournette ends up. Uh, is he going to be motivated by money? Does he yes. want to run it back with the? I I yes. I, I agree. Yes. You know, does he want to run it back with the Bucks? You know, is it going to be somewhere in the middle? Is someone willing to offer him the money? Because you saw when he got the money, it seemed to be an issue early yeah. on with Jacksonville. Yeah. You know that he was motivated incorrectly. Then he got in reality slapped him in the face, and he ended up with the Bucks, which panned out perfect for him and rehabbing his image. But they were close to releasing him late in the season. I, I, I've read stories that he, when he was like an inactive for like a week or two, they almost released him. So the Bucks did not even want him after yeah. signing him at one point. Good thing they said, let's just keep him inactive and see if we can figure this shit out. Cause he was instrumental in them 
marching to their Super Bowl at the end of the day. But there's still some character issues, obviously, with Leonard Fournette. <laughs> I mean, it's clear. So I have zero clue where Leonard Fournette ends up. If it's Seattle, so be it. I hope it's not because I am still one of the remaining Rashad Petty believers that if he could finally get his chance, maybe there's an opportunity here for Rashad Petty. (laughs) But there's a lot of it doesn't matter names, you know, the rest of this list. Phil Lindsay will not be back with the Broncos and will not be anything more than a change of pace back wherever else he signs, even though he's – a very good player. Mike Davis probably made himself decent coin in what he did with the Panthers, but he is still an older back. He's not going to be a starter anywhere else. I could see him back with the Bears and kind of being the handcuff for David Montgomery as they had nothing. Good. They had to get they had to give David Montgomery every single touch, you know, when it was all said and done. James White is going to be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer, I thoroughly believe at the end of the anything day. Anything less than 100% chance of that? I would go 101. <laughs> I would take negative betting odds you know, on any book. Le'Veon Bell might not ever play football again. Who knows? Tevin Coleman, he stinks. It's irrelevant. Matt Breda blew his shot with the Dolphins. And then the bottom of this list, the bottom of this list that we are looking at is Todd Gurley. How the mighty have fallen. He's obviously, he was on a one-year deal with Atlanta. I'm pretty sure they've already come out and said they're not bringing him back, which why should they? And yeah. why would he want to? He, I don't know what's next for Todd Gurley. It's clear that knee injury has taken its toll and sapped a lot of the ability from Gurley. I think he still could be a role player in the right offense and probably reasonably effective, but on a like 10 touch per game basis. And yeah, that doesn't, no that doesn't do anyone well for, that does no one, that does nothing for fantasy. He's going to, like I said, I, what I say, he had, I forget how many two touchdown games last year and still was not an RB2 at the end of the day. So where he goes is going to be more of a detriment to the other running backs on that team than it will be to the benefit of Todd Gurley. If you didn't sell Todd Gurley, at least at some point last year, when he was scoring two touchdowns a game, he's probably going to die on your roster or he's going to be a throw in where you just need to free up the space. And that's unfortunate because he was the RB1, what, three years ago? Like the before Christian yep. McCaffrey was a thing. It was multiple years of girly in that Sean yep. McVay offense. And now he is listed as like the running back 10 in free agency. Well, I mean, lots of guys fall off a cliff all the time, especially, you know, you're very keen to it as a dynasty owner because you have a guy that's, I mean, I've, I've got, had Odell Beckham in several spots who was the dynasty wide receiver one. And I think now is ADP. I think he's going in the 10th or 13th or something crazy. So, that's a huge fall. And in a lot of times it is age and injury related. And Gurley's obviously every day a little older. And then these uh, leg injuries are piling up. And we, we've we seen it off the Todd, cliff. So Todd Gurley will not turn 27 until August of next year. I mean, that's. Well, look at two of the names on here. You mentioned Bell earlier. We had Bell yeah. and Gurley. If you back four years ago and someone offered you Gurley and Bell, what would you give up? Your next seven firsts? My my <laughs> dynasty league of record, I had Bell and Gurley <laughs> as the Bell Cows. They won me at the inaugural year. I was highly competitive for the next few. Neither of those fine young gentlemen are on my team at yep. present. I traded Bell a year ago, and I traded Gurley this season. So, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy how it happens. Now, let's – we'll do it. We'll dip our toe in the tight ends. It's not nearly as sexy, but we – be remiss if we didn't talk about tight ends and then we'll get out of here. So the top available tight ends, I'm going to skip to two because he's a favorite of ours and we'll, we'll touch on one, but I'm going to go right to two and spend more time on him. And it is Johnu Smith. The Titans have pretty much come out and said that they're going to let Johnu Smith and Corey Davis test the free agent market because they quote have earned the right. That's pretty much, we're going to see if there's, (laughs) there's a better market out there and then we'll, we'll offer accordingly. And it's also that the Titans are 21st in, in cap space at present. So they can't go around willy nilly spending money on a lightly used tight end and a, you know, a wide receiver too on their own team. So I do not believe that Johnny Smith is back with the Tennessee Titans next year. What say you? And if you don't believe it, where does Johnny Smith play better in 2021? He is another one that I did not know was a free agent going into this. I thought he had another year there. But 
Uh, I'm I'm surprised. We're another guy that we're a big fan of here. Hasn't been used heavily enough. I mean, he was buried behind Delaney Walker to start his career. Then had had a decent year last year. I think he was tight end three through the first half of the year this season. So when given the workload, he's been able to produce. And we say this all the time, all the time, but tight ends take a little while. And especially if you're buried behind a bona fide starter, like he was. So I think any tight end needy team that wants to bring him in, I think he has, you know, for fantasy top 12 upside. So I, I like, I like him wherever he goes because anybody who's going to sign a, a free agent tight end to decent money has a need at the position. I mean, again, just playing the shuffling game and you skipped Hunter Henry, who I'm sure we'll get to next. If Hunter Henry goes elsewhere, the chargers have a need put Janu Smith on the chargers. How, how much do you like that? You know what I mean? So I, I, I think there's opportunities out there again, going down the list, skipping ahead unintentionally. If the, the saints move on, I mean, Hill isn't the answer at tight end. So, John o. Smith would be Adam a- Troutman. Oh fuck, I forgot about him. Yeah, I do like Troutman. So scratch oh, yeah. that one. But you know, Seahawks have had a history of using the tight end. John o. Smith would be a, a good fit in Seattle, even though I like some of their deep stash guys. They're not John o. Smith's level. So I think there are places for him to land that make him fantasy viable. And I think anybody who's going to sign him is going to have a need at the position. So I'm. I'm I think he's pretty landing spot proof unless he ends up somewhere weird. Cause someone's willing to pay him to be a, you know, a, a high price backup. It's funny. Cause my landing spots for Johnny Smith are eerily similar to his former teammate, Corey Davis at the end of the day. But it's first with Jacksonville who has all the cap space in the world. And you sign Trevor Lawrence, you have a bunch of good wide receivers. You have shit at the tight end position. They declined Tyler Eifert's option, so he's gone. Are you going to have Josh Oliver be the guy there? Probably not. I could see. Not with the new regime. If they didn't change coaches, I would say yes. But, yeah, no. I, I could see John U. Smith down in Duval. The New England Patriots are third with the boatload of money. You know how they prioritize tight end. I'm pretty sure that there's a clip of Bill Belichick saying that John U. Smith is like, the most athletic tight end in the NFL or, or like slobbering praise all over him. It's it, it, in some capacity. So I could see that being a landing spot. Baltimore, who clearly like to prioritize two tight end sets. They trade away Hayden Hurst. Nick Boyle gets hurt. Their offense really struggled. Johnny Smith could help that offense um, as well. And then you mentioned the chargers. Yeah. I don't believe they resign Hunter Henry. They tagged him last year and probably, we're discussing a long-term deal and it never happened. They're not going to tag him again. So it's likely he's gone. I would love to see John U. Smith with uh, Justin a bear uh, with those chargers, but I think better days are ahead for John U. Smith, regardless. Go. You want to hear the Belichick quote? Ah, oh, I dude, I know it's like drool worthy. So hit me with it. John U. Smith is probably the best in the league after the catch. <laughs> there you go. He's just a really good tight end, can do lots of things, blocks well, runs well, is a good receiver, played him at tailback. He looked good there. Very athletic player, hard to tackle, catches the ball well. I can't imagine anyone better than him after the catch. Bill Belichick has never spoken that glowingly about Tom Brady in his entire career. Like, it's... Dude, it just makes – they have a ton of money. They need upgrades across the board offensively if they want anyone to come there. I could see them giving him a uh, – a, what's it called? An Austin Hooper type yeah. deal that the Browns got last year. Um, yeah, I wanted to skip Hunter Henry because I love John Smith. Smith. So I know you like him as well. But Hunter Henry is the bell of the ball at tight end. Well, you mentioned not- Jacksonville, and I think that's – that wouldn't make a ton of sense. I can see Jacksonville dipping into the tight end pool because they haven't had a tight end of consequence ever in Jacksonville. I mean, what is it? Uh, Julius, Julius Thomas. Julius Thomas went there after the the Broncos days with Peyton and flamed out. Mercedes Lewis was there forever as a blocking plus tight end, doing largely what he still does today in Green Bay, catching a touchdown that helps nobody, but. I can't think of someone that jumps out at me, but Jacksonville is is a landing spot. I could 
you know, we're talking about the Patriots. If they don't get Johnny Smith, they have the money to overpay a <laughs> Hunter Henry. So those two guys are going to land elsewhere uh, than the Chargers and Titans. I don't know that's the best situation for Henry because the Chargers are a ascending offense with the Titans. Johnny Smith getting out of Tennessee is probably a good idea because they used him far too much as a blocker and let Anthony Ferkser be the pass catcher at tight end in that low volume offense. So I think better days are ahead for Johnny Smith. The rest of this list, there's, there's no one of consequence. If Rob Gronkowski plays football again, it'll be for the bucks. It will be nowhere else and he will do shit until the super bowl. So it's not going to help your fantasy team. Gerald Everett could be appealing. I did yeah. like Everett coming out. He was the first pick of Sean McVay, and it seems like it just never clicked, whether it was him, whether it was injury, whatever it was. But I do think Everett could be a reclamation project somewhere else. You mentioned Jared Cook with the Saints. He's not resigned there. That's going to be Adam Troutman. Greg Olson has already inked a deal to be a, an NFL broadcaster. Yep. No more Seahawks. Jordan Reed doesn't matter. Jeez. Dan Arnold doesn't matter. Trey Burton doesn't matter. Jason Witten retired. I thought, Arnold, I thought Arnold had a little – Showed a little flash there towards the end of last year. He did, I, but I, I don't I, like him elsewhere. I no. like him if he goes back to Arizona. Exactly. And he probably could end up back in Arizona, all things being considered, because I don't think there'll be a ton of a big market for him. But he was very touch independent, which could be said for just about any tight end. I agree. Not totally irrelevant, but I don't think we'll ever be a tight end one because he won't get the volume. Witten is going to retire a Cowboy. Jacob Hollister is the second Seahawk tight end I'm mentioning here and is relevant. And then Demetrius Harris, who He's always had a little bit of like, what Boy. if to him? Yeah, yeah, he yeah, might yeah. even resign with the Bears because they're going to, no, there'll be no more uh, Jimmy Graham there and he could be behind Cole Komet. But anyone else there that you want to speak about? You just kind of mentioned Dan Arnold in passing. I, I like Trey Burton's upside. I mean, he's obviously years older. He had that one good year with Philly. A lot of that's probably just a result of the Philly system where they feature tight ends a lot more than other teams. Uh, you you fleeced me into <laughs> giving you a first for him at some point when he signed with the Bears because I had some hope. But I, I, when he came back from injury last year, he was he was decent. I, I played him in a couple leagues where I was uh, um, streaming tight ends. So he still has – the upside, I mean, he's never going to be a week-in, week-out tight end one, but he's still a viable fantasy asset, like you said, especially in a position where it's a crapshoot. You you can play him in some good matchups, I think, depending on where he goes. John, I see a mark, I take down a mark. That's yeah, that's what that's I fair. know. But you wanted Trey Burton, and I – did listen, I? We podcast guy. I told you he wasn't good. <laughs> I told you when he signed with the Bears, it was a bad deal. It was Ryan Pace continuously overpaying to try to fix the tight end position. I think, quote, I said on this podcast, Ryan Pace needs to call me next time he is going to sign a tight end, and I'll point him in the right direction. He paid Trey Burton. $11 million in 2018 and just under $7 million in 2019. So good for Trey Burton because he made, looks like rough math, about $4 million in four years with the Eagles. He was on the Chris Carson payment plan with my Eagles. And somehow made 2.8 his last year there, but kudos to him. 910. Oh, he still, oh, sorry. Ryan Pace still paid him $3 million in 2020, not to be on the Chicago Bears. So he made $20 million from the Bears and another 910 from the Colts. I could see him going back to the Colts on a cheaper deal to be reunited with Carson Wentz in, in that offense because he's not commanding anything as a 29-year-old plus free agent, you know, undersized move tight end. So I would much rather take a flyer on Gerald Everett as even as an NFL franchise than Trey Burton. They're both very similar, kind of more move tight end guys, but Everett is younger more dynamic and has still more untapped potential than, than a Trey Burton. I, I concur. <laughs> and in my that, defense, we have to start two. We start two tight ends in that league. So you, you need to pay up, unfortunately. Listen, hey, and the Bears gave him the money that made it seem like he was going to be a thing. I just saw enough Trey Burton in my life to know that that was not going to happen. So. Yeah, I, I understood what he did, and I think I totally fucked that pickup anyway, John. So I don't know that either of us really won. On... What they like to call it, lose-lose. <laughs> yeah, it was a late first. I was willing to move on as I was tight end deep, and 
I'm known to uncover gems at the tight end position, so I was not worried about losing a Trey Burton from my stable. But, yeah, it was a that helped no one trade at the end of the day, which most of these free agents are not going to help a team either. We are not going to dive into defense. We dabble in IDP. We play in IDP leagues. We are not going to get into the free agent edge players right now, as there are still quite a few. But this is offense only at this point in time. Those were the free agents of consequence. If we didn't name your guy, it's because he sucks, and it doesn't matter where he goes. He's not going to help the NFL team or your fantasy team anymore, and you should have already traded him two years ago. Anything else to say on the free agent crop of 2021, John? I got one IDP guy just to dig in. I just want to know if you think he even goes anywhere. Ruben Foster. Oh, man. I love Ruben Foster. I do. Uh, He's an absolute psychopath who's just been (laughs) befell by freak injuries. I have him in a a few spots. Um, They said he might never play football again after. That nerve injury? Yeah, while he was watching a play in the in like training camp. Like he wasn't even involved. It like spilled over and he didn't get out of the way quick enough. Like that is the tale of Reuben Foster. Like countless gun charges and domestic violence temps, freak injuries. Oh. Uh, that's what's gonna do him in. Ill <laughs> about the man. He was never convicted, but the the guy shit happens Fairly. to people. Largely oh largely that's for it. a reason. Um but on the field, that don't dude, forget he called him the root kicked out of the car for fighting that with as nurse. well. Yeah, he did not want to take the piss test or draw blood or whatever. No, he didn't want to wait in line, I believe. He didn't want to wait in line. Yeah, he went to skip to the skip yes. to the front. I'm Ruben Foster. They, they hit him with the Do you know who I am? And she's like, Yeah, you're one of 500 NFL <laughs> draft prospects that are here. Yeah, yeah, I believe that was how it went down. Just about. Listen, I'm still on the field. Unbelievable. I just reckless abandon the Ruben missile crisis is, is him on the field. He has very much a Vontez perfect type uh, desire on the field to inflict pain on people. And I like that from my oh. middle linebacker. Yeah. And so I do still own him a few places and have not let the dream die, but best landing spot probably is to come back to Washington. If he can get on the field with that line in front of him, he would wreak havoc. If you could get back to 80% of room falsehood, not where I thought you were going, John, with let's get out of here on IDP, but I'm damn happy that you did. Just a, I, a fun, a fun name to chat about. I am, I'm a fan of room Foster's. Yeah. So that, that will do it. Hopefully uh, some of this comes true and we look super smart. Um, but yeah. Free agency is always interesting. And a lot of these guys end up floating out there a lot longer than we think. Don't get the money we want, but this is uh Aaron Jones watch 2021. That's what this is. So that should do it for myself, John Debari, for my co-host, Mr. Matt Walker. We are the Fantasy 40, and we are out of here. Pay that man his money. Okay. You got to work that into the intro. <laughs> Pay that man. Pay that man his I'm not going to be able to find it. I saw something. Let's see if I can find it. I'm not going to be able to find it. I'm not going to be able to find it. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's in two. I saw it. Yeah, I didn't even think about it till right now. Fuck. Ew, sometimes you see shit and you're like, oh, that's interesting. And I totally forget that it might be important. <laughs> Listen, I books bookmark everything. I've never once went in my bookmarks and actually looked up <laughs> not once in my entire I don't even know career. how to do that. So I had someone show me. I think it was J Mike actually showed me how to access the bookmarks and I forgot yet again because I just don't do it. I'm like, oh, that I don't have time to look at that right now, but that might be interesting. Bookmark. Well, never or, or the lists. You ever see people like, <clears throat> you've been added to this list. And I'm like, what list? Yeah, those are those are different. You are part of this fantasy football community. I am? Yeah. I don't news know what they news to me. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking idiots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine how amazing we'd be if we figured this out. could use this technology for its... I yeah, I mean, they're dropping all these. I'm writing them down. I'm like, who knows? Like, if we ever get to that <laughs> point, but I was like, I am. I literally, I'm like, I don't know what this thing is, or the two things that you guys are talking about. I mean, literally, Twitter's getting on my nerves these last couple of weeks. But 
Yeah. Well, I refuse. I will not click on. You know, I give up on that. Where where will I be? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's got the stuff at the top with um. Fuck, do you call it? Oh, the fleets. Yes, I, I I refuse. I've not clicked it once. I'm not going to start. I mean, angry. What's it? Simpsons meme. Angry yeah. old man yells at clouds. But that's what I, I like. I'm my late. bank, my bank changed their fucking the way they do the bill pay now. It's like this is easier and better, and it's just horrific. Like it's so bad, I almost want to switch banks. Uh, <laughs> like, I'll just take all my money out. I can't do this. Yeah, not to me. It is. Yeah, it's terrible. Put it back the way it was. I'm pulling my five hundred dollars. I don't know. It's so, confusing. Everyone's just trying to get over on on the common man, John. That's what it is. Always. Yeah, we, we don't stand a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I give that an official oof. Oof. All right. Well, you have it there, Aaron. A A, -A Ron. I w not that anybody wants to <laughs> better. get in trouble for this, but I would I would give her a five. Whoa. This chick is dead center, middle of the pack. She she is the she's the what is it, the Dalton scale? <laughs> she is literally the line of demarcation. Them out. And All right. She, now she's a four. Down, <laughs> downgrade. <laughs> All right. Let's get off of Shailene Woodsy and let's get into these free agents. <laughs> People make so. poor decisions all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like she could kick, kicking a field goal down nine points in the. In the <laughs> she house. Could, be, could, could be completely crazy and ruining his life and. Many many people have married, or maybe that's ruiners. exactly what Aaron Rodgers needs. He might be crazy. I think he's a little bit insane. Something he, he had the, the, the ego on that man probably is borderline American Psycho at this point. You could just tell, like just his <laughs> his face. Scenes, I'm picturing scenes in the movie with him. <laughs> oh, that's right, just strutting <laughs> his way seamless, down. Seamless transition too. With a cassette player, yeah. Talking about. Fucking business cards. Is this bone? <laughs> ah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, he is a lunatic. You're right. You he can is. plug. You can put him in that movie seamlessly. Drop him right in. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Wouldn't All skip right. a beat. <laughs> I'm not gonna shake this at all. <laughs> oh, I, I'm gonna watch. Fuck, I don't have time to watch a movie, but I'm going to watch some clips on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be, I'm going to picture him in all of them, and I'm going to enjoy it more than I did originally. Fuck out. An anti Star Wars person, but I have grown to become one. Like, I, I, I thought I liked him, and then I went back and watched him part, the old ones, like as an adult, and I'm like, oh, this is fucking trash. These movies suck. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were cool when I was a kid. Like Luke yeah. is hateable as yeah, an then, adult. Yeah. Then I grew up. Yeah. Hey, this guy is a nerf herder. You're like, oh, I fucking wish this guy got his head cut off. He's the worst. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Gonna, I'm treading in the other direction now. I'm, a, I'm mm -hmm. an evil villain enthusiast. <laughs> as far as yeah. uh, I'm, I'm Darth Maul or whatever. I, and come I've at, seen Harry Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Let Ready? us dive in. 